Donaldson and player number seven, Peyton McNamara. Um, just for you to know, we have translation in both Portuguese and English today, so if you require translation, please use the FIFA interpretation app and um, just say what language you'll be speaking before the question. If you have any questions, raise your hand, wait for the microphone from our volunteers. When you get the microphone, state your name and your organization, and then you can ask your question. So we'll start first here. Thank you. I have questions for Coach and for player McNamara. Coach, describe me please why Khadija is so important for your teams. What he can do to, for Jamaica to continue to dream to eliminate Brazil and clinch to the final. And for McNamara, from the point of view of a player that plays together with her, what can add to the game of Jamaica? Thank you very much. I think I'll go first. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I need a description right there. She's a big target. You know, she's a, I would call her lethal weapon. She scores goals and uh, she's the all-time leading goal scorer in Jamaica. So that men and women, so that, I think that speaks for itself and she's a very technical, you know, good leader and just a solid footballer. So I think um, that's just my description of her. And as a player, obviously she has made a great name for herself. She sets the standard in trainings and in games and she's just someone that we can all look up to um, when we're playing with her. Joe Lynch, um, question in English uh, for ESPN for both Coach Long and Peyton. Just wondering, heading into the final match day, first World Cup win on the board, fate is in your own hands, coming up against a huge you know, women's footballing power in Brazil, South American powerhouses. Just what have the emotions and the sense of occasion been like in the camp, in the lead up to this game? And, how do you approach it? Do you relish the underdog title? Is David versus Goliath shocking the world? How do you go about getting your heads in the game? Well, I mean, as you describe it, David versus Goliath, I mean, I wish it was that easy. But, um, you know, Brazil is a powerhouse to say. And um, I think we, we, we relish the challenge. All along, we know we're going to come into the World Cup as being underdogs. From the qualifier, we've been underdogs. So... It's nothing new to us, you know, what Brazil is a powerhouse. We have to come out and just try to match them step for step, step for step. They're very skillful, and we know they're going to come after us with everything that they have, so we have to be ready. And this tournament for us has had has been a list of firsts. I mean, we're creating history, and we're in the process of creating a legacy, and I think that process continues tomorrow when we go up against one of the biggest teams in the world. Uh, hey, Coach. Hey, Peyton. Elias Lorraine from Valo Media in English, of course. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, you've had you know, such big success at this World Cup so far. Are you guys doing this in spite of the fact of a federation that doesn't want to you know, really support you financially? You know, we did hear the story about the uh, GoFundMe for raising funds for you guys. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Well, that's in the past. And we try to, um, we're a very resilient team. And, you know, stuff that happened with the federation, you know, we're not going to go over that right now because our focus all along has been Okay, let's just stick together as a group. You know, to us, we describe it, this is our foxhole, just like a war, and we're going to just protect the foxhole and move on, and the rest of the stuff will take care of itself when all said and done. So, you know, that's as much as I'm going to touch on that. Hi, Emily Dozier with the Associated Press. So obviously you guys have had quite a journey over the past few months, like you just touched on. But especially these past couple of weeks, you guys have had some historic games. As a how has the team grown throughout these past couple of weeks? Well, you know, from the qualification, I say, you know, we have grown because, you know, you know, during the qualification, you know, in Mexico, we, you know, we really hasn't had a lot of games after that. And but I think the player, I use the word again, resilience, and you know, they 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 come into this World Cup, and we always look forward to saying we need to try any way possible to get to the second work round. And I think the players are liking Australia. They like it here. So they see some kangaroos, so we want to stay a little bit longer. Um, Solid Hill, HBS. A question for both Lauren and for Peyton. Um, how has your success so far been received back in Jamaica? And Peyton, you talked about legacy. What would you like to see that legacy be, say, in 10 years' time for women's football in Jamaica? Well, I think... First of all, being 
the pioneers kind of for uh, women's football in Jamaica. Uh, we have a lot of room to grow still, but us being up there as one of the best teams um, in the sport would be a great legacy and a great target, I think, for us. I mean, with the way we're going, with the players we have coming in, I think we're on track. Tudo bem? É, bom dia, Denise Torredor do São Paulo. Sorry, my question in Portuguese. É, para os dois. É, treinador, eu queria que você falasse que vocês já estão fazendo história nesse momento. Porque comparado à primeira Copa do Mundo, que vocês não conseguiram vencer nenhum jogo, agora não tomar nenhum gol, isso já é histórico para vocês. Sobre isso, para o país de vocês, para a Jamaica. E para a Namara, é, se tem alguma mudança na estratégia para enfrentar o Brasil, porque elas vão vir com querendo vencer porque elas precisam dessa vitória para seguir. Então, se vai mudar alguma coisa na estratégia de jogo de vocês. Well, you know, you 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 refer to the um, first World Cup and um, the the when when we start working, I was the assistant coach then, and Coach Hugh Menzies gave him big praises. We, we worked together. And that squad, we, we weren't planning on going to the World Cup. We were just planning on Cidela Marley was brave in putting the, calling us up and uh, having us help out because the football in Jamaica was null and void and, you know, and, she, and she put it together. And, and somewhere, miraculously, we put something together and we got to the World Cup and it, it was like, oh, it happened. Okay? And from that, you know, you know praises to Coach Hugh Menzies, we, 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 we think we could take this further. So... So the legacy started there, but I think we have long, long ways to go in terms of what countries like Brazil and these countries have produced. We're far off when it comes to, in terms of women's football and the rest of the world, but we're trying to grow. As far as tactics go, I would love to tell you how we're going to get a result tomorrow, but I think I'm going to keep that to our, ourselves. Um, we just got to play our game, play how we play, and make it hard for Brazil to beat us. Hi, uh, Steph John from the Athletics. Sorry for asking you to repeat yourself on it. I won't ask you to like blow up your thought tactics, but against uh, France, we saw Brazil with the high pressure that France offered. Uh, their coach talked about how that was deliberate to stop them from one of their most powerful assets, which is their build-up play, and you know, making them not quite so compact in the defense. I'm just wondering, watching that game, if you saw things as well where you're like, this is something that we can target, or if with your players and your personnel. You're just going to have to bring your own style to this game. Well, in terms of France, you know, I mean, what France did to Brazil, you know, I'm sure Brazil will make the adjustments. So there is a, it's a cat and mouse game, as we always call it, and there's going to be adjustment. Obviously, we will try to, you know, mimic some stuff, but we're not France. They're totally different from us, and um, France tactics works, you know, and um, we're not going to use the tactics that France uses. We'll just use the tactics that we think our players are capable of doing. Um, question for both um, Coach Lord and Clayton. You mentioned you're enjoying your time in Australia. You're currently training out in Bandura. It's the home of the Matildas, but really it's the home of the reggae girls. They used it for about a week after it opened, and then you, you moved in and you've had it longer than they did. Just what sort, how have you enjoyed using those facilities? Brand new, it's the largest ever investment in football only facilities in this country has ever seen. How are you enjoying those facilities and what advantages have you taken from them? I tell you what, I mean, you said it's the home of the regular girls. I wish if we could take it back to Jamaica with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's the most fantastic place in terms of training facility that I have ever seen in the world. And it's, you know, it's better than most men. I mean, big clubs. And it's not done yet. It's not complete. But it's, we have enjoyed it. The staff has been excellent with us. You know, they, they, the train, it has everything for us to train. And I just think it's a fantastic stuff for, um, to gift it to the Matildas. And you know what, I praise them for fighting for it, and we need something like that, you know, it would be fantastic. Yeah, I'm incredibly thankful to be able to train there. Um, from the recovery tools, like the cold tubs, hot tubs, the weight room, the treadmills, the bikes, there's just endless amount of things available for players that are important for us when it comes to training and recovery. Um, photographers, can we please leave the room? Thank you. Hi. With Brown, IRFM in Jamaica, English. Um, coach first and then. Uh, coach, the team played well without Bonnie Shaw. Um, different formation, different tactics. 
with this factor into how it's set up for Brazil. And Peyton, um, we stand on part of history at Jamaica. Um, can it fear of nerves getting into the team for the game? There is nerve, but I just think this is when you go enjoy it. I mean, you know, I mean, what the hell do we have to lose? More than just go out and just enjoy yourself and play. And with a player like Bonnie Shaw, she's going to pose problem for anybody. Okay, I mean, it's, 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 just, it's just one of those things that we're happy to have her back because we think she's a fantastic player. And obviously, we can use her in certain areas that we didn't do against Panama and try to be effective. As I say, try to be effective. So it's got to be everybody. It's, uh, everybody has to do their job. Bonnie Shaw is just one player, but she's a very, very good player. Yeah, I think when it comes to nerves, I mean, we've all played this sport for so long that you just make it as simple as you can. You've played football before. Just go out there and play football. Uh, yeah, Coach Tarek Tandy from the New York Times. But for both of you, it's a broader question about the World Cup. Um, Jamaica, is, the women have now been in two consecutive World Cups. Philippines were here first time. A Philippines team has been in any World Cup. Vietnam, too. What? Just in terms of the, the, the platform this gives for people back home or people of whatever you know background, be it Vietnamese or Jamaican or Filipino, to be on the biggest stage, what, what does that mean for the communities overseas or at home? Could you give a sense of the occasion? Yeah, I think, and you're talking about smaller football, women's football country. I think the growth has been tremendous, and you can see Morocco and some of these teams. You can see what Colombia, but the smaller countries now are, will, will, will realize that there's a, there's a platform out there. And I think young girls and young, you know, you know, young women all over the world in the smaller country, and they're looking in Africa what Nigeria has done, and everybody's looking at the smaller country. And I think um, all these governments and everybody, it's time to step up. Cut the bull crap. Step up and support women's football, and let's move along. And I, I can speak from personal experience. Obviously, I wasn't at the last World Cup, and it was Jamaica's first time making it. And I think seeing them play on that level and that platform inspired me to be like, hey, I can get there one day. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, and now look where I am. Uh, hey, Ben. Nice for Media. How excited are you tomorrow to play against the likes of uh, possibly Marta and uh, Jabinia? Well, I mean, it's the players that I've looked up to, I've watched, I've... I've seen them play an endless amount of games. I mean, it's, it's an honor to share the field with them, and it's always exciting when I get to go out and play soccer. So, And I just add to that is um, when it comes to football, every, Brazil, every, every Jamaican there see themselves as a Brazilian, but that's on the main side. <laughs> and I know everybody in Jamaica owns a Brazilian shirt, but it's also the same color as us. So <laughs> I'm just wondering what color we're going to wear with our fans tomorrow, so hopefully they have a Jamaican shirt they can switch up. <laughs> uh, hi, Coach. This is Cassie Hedis. I'm with Associated Press, and I'll be asking in English. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on the dynamic that, you know, having the Swaby sisters on the team, obviously Alex and scoring in the last game, but like, what sort of dynamic that adds to the team and what, what they bring? The okay. We always call them baby Swaby and mama Swaby, so... Um, <laughs> The double Swaby, it's been great, you know, for, for the last four years, just having them and just watching them grow as sisters. And I think it's even, even better that um, they're playing side to side with each other. And I think their mom and dad, and they don't know how precious that is because that doesn't happen very often. You play on the same team, but you don't play side to side. Okay, they're, they're interchangeable. So I think it's a fantastic stuff for, thing for us, and I love to see it. And, you know, I think... The future is bright for them. Um, question for whoever feels better suited to respond. We've seen so far at the games in Melbourne, the first game, there was a large Nigerian contingent here that really seemed to lift their side. Um, there was German and Moroccan fans here. I'm just wondering, you, as you've been training in Melbourne, have you been able to link up with the Jamaican diaspora that's out here in Australia? And are you expecting them to get along and, you know, in this grounds? Hundred people can sound like a thousand, and thousand can sound like ten thousand. If they get the right sort of metrics going, are you expecting Jamaican support tomorrow? I don't think the, the diaspora is as big as the Nigerian and the Colombian here, but we have a lot of Jamaicans here, whether in Perth or you know in Sydney. We have, but I think we're louder, okay. And I think a lot of the Australians, can we love Australia? I think a lot of the Australian, we have similar colours. 
So they're waving their colors and, you know, and the support from the Australians have been fantastic. And we expect it's going to even be louder. So there'll, be, there'll be a lot of yellows in the stadium tomorrow. I don't know who's going to be who. You know, Brazil and Jamaica. So we've got to be careful with that. You put the call out to Aussies to get behind the reggae. I just tell the right now that we love them, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, just come out and support. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you, everyone.